Hey guys, it's Codger. Just wanted to shoot a little intro here for the video you're about to watch. Uh, just watching Buck and Billy Ray on YouTube there. You guys, go check him out. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. Pretty awesome guy. So, anyway guys, this is going to be the video you're about to watch is uh, about the Solo 647. My great grandfather's. And I have the specifications here now. So I can read it all off to you and give you kind of an idea of what I'm dealing with before I start. So, Solo is actually a German, German saw company, for those who, who don't know. Uh, they're out of Stuart, St wait, St Stuttgart, Germany. So, this saw was produced from 83 to 95. And I'm pretty sure mine is a as an 83 because the carburetor was time stamped 1983 so it could be an 84 but it's probably an 83 so it was probably one of the first ones produced uh, 47 cc uh, let me see here 13 pounds with a 16 inch bar and chain so I don't know that's probably about standard for the size of it uh, let me see here. Uh, it's all electronic. No, no points, no condenser. Uh, Tillotson was the carburetor. Came with a wall barrow too, but but uh, mine's got the Tillotson HU sixty three A. Uh, of course, air filter. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, here we go. Shortest bar it came with was a 16 inch bar. The longest bar it came with was a 20 inch bar. Now, here is the interesting part about this saw. This saw, 647, was produced by Solo. Okay. This same model was produced by Home Light as a model 47. Okay. This is interesting. I'd like to know more about this. I, I've tried to do some research, kind of find out what the story was, and I haven't come up with much. But Solo and Home Light did this on a lot of different models, like the 654, model 54 Home Light. So I don't know if they were like uh, partnering, like partners companies or what. But anyway, so Solo and Home Light shared a lot of different models of saws for a while there. And it was the same exact saw. The only difference is instead of having a square Solo sticker on it, it had a round home light sticker. But it was the same exact saw. Right from the tip of the bar back to the handle. So, anyway guys, that's just a short little specifications list there. Just to give you a little something. And uh, tell you a little bit about the saw. So, enjoy the video. It's pretty funny. And uh, we'll, have, we'll have more videos to come. Hey guys, it's Codger. Got the Solo 647 here. And I have not tried to start this since I got it home. I, I tried it immediately when I got home. I haven't, I haven't tried it since then. I think the gas lines were bad. Maybe the carb was gummed up. I haven't put a carb kit in it. I just cleaned the carburetor and oiled the gaskets and put new lines on it. Hope and save a little money where I'm trying to get all these saws running at once. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not really sure. So, this was, I guess, Grandpa's favorite saw. It was his baby. He didn't like to loan it out to anybody. <laughs> so, it ought to be interesting to see if we can get it to run. So, stand by. Okay, guys. I think we're ready. Okay. Flip it on. How else is going to go? Uh, no prime.
Okay guys, take two. Set you there. We'll see what happens. Not sure what was screwed up or if it's gonna screw up again. It's something with the rewind, but just had to put a new starter open then, so could have been anything. Okay guys, take three, and four, five, I lost track, I think I'm going to go this time, let's see what we got, you ready? Here we go. Set it down if I can, this one's kind of kind of hard to start. Trigger lock on, I guess. No doubt. thing and I are becoming enemies really fast. I don't know if it's something to do with the gas line. I'll just put all new gas lines in it. So could be something to do with that. <clears> there <throat> could be something totally different. Who knows? I don't I don't know, that's for sure. guys it's codger i'm back here's the solo uh i wanted to give you an update on this so the other day in that in that clip you saw i was i was pulling this over well here's the thing actually let's let's start here the uh the starter rope was all frayed on this and screwed up and it was a nightmare so actually i have it right here yeah, it, it, it tore in half. It's pretty nasty. So anyway, I replaced the starter rope on it. So when I did that, I realized something wasn't quite right with the with the whole setup going on there. Because you know how most saws, okay? If you don't know, let me let me just tell you. Most saws, they have your flywheel, of course. And on your flywheel, there is some metal, uh, like fins on springs. And they they snap shut like this. And you've got the end of your starter spool, okay. And there's a notch in that, and they grab them, them them fins grab the end of that starter spool, and that's what turns the flywheel over and turns the motor over when you pull the rope. And them fins they they grab onto the end of the spool, spins it. Making everything work together. On the solo, it's a totally different setup. There are no fins on the flywheel. You have a little plastic fin, just one. A little plastic fin with a nub on each side. And that slides into the starter rope spool. And the other nub goes into a hole on the flywheel. And when you pull it over, that's what. That's what pulls it over, a plastic fin. I hate it. It's a terrible design. So, the other day the problem I was having was, I kept putting this back together and putting it on, and that fin 
kept coming loose and was getting in there in the flywheel and binding everything out. But it wouldn't it would not stay on the spool and in the flywheel at the same time. It just kept coming loose. You get like two pulls and then it would come loose. So I thought, geez, I don't know. I don't know what's screwed up on it. I can't get parts for the saw other than the carb kit. So this is like a 83, I think. That's what that was the time stamp on the carburetor. So I'm assuming it's an 83. It could be an 84, but anyway. So yeah. So anyway, I got to looking online, tried to do research, and there ain't a whole lot of information about the saw online. But I did find a photo of the original starter spool setup. There was a little plastic circular disc thing. It's about that thick. Almost like a plastic washer with notches cut in it. And that slides over the top of the spool, holds the fin on, and then you put your clip through. Well, that was missing right from the time I got the saw. So, I was like, geez, I don't know. So, I tried to find one online. Can't find one, right? So, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have to make one out of something. So, my first thought was, I'll make one out of a tin can. Okay, because it's got to be thin, right? I don't know if I... would like to find the one I made for you to show you. i give you kind of an idea. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of swamped out here with parts of junk and everything. Because I've been tearing one saw apart after another and trying to get them all running. And it's been hectic, to say the least. I don't see... Oh, right here. Okay. So I caught one out of a tin can. One of Dad's energy drink cans. <laughs> so that's the hole where the, like, the spindle thing comes up through on the spool. Where the spool sets down over and then that little, little shaft thing sticks up and that slides down over and then you put a clip through. So I made the hole there for that and then I made this groove notch to hold that that pin. I would take this apart and show you what I'm talking about. But honestly, I just got it together so it'll work and I really don't want to take it apart because I'm not really sure if it's completely right or not and I don't want to screw it up. But it's working right now. So anyway, so that's what I made. I clipped that on over. It worked great for a day. Okay. Then this little notch and stuff, as you can see, ripped out. I originally cut it to right here, and then it ripped down here. So that was a scrap. So then I thought, okay, I need something more durable. So I got a Tupperware. And I cut the bottom out of the Tupperware. And I made one out of the Tupperware, which is over here. Let's see? Got the notch there, got the hole there. This should have worked great in theory, but it didn't. It flexed too much, and it kept letting the, the fin loose. So, I was running out of ideas and patience. So, anyway, I, uh, I got to looking at that, that pin. It's like a, it's like a spring clip more than a pin. It's, it, <coughs> it doesn't go through, it goes... It goes over, like, it's like, uh, let me see, uh, hang on, got a piece of, got a pen or something here, I'm going to draw you a picture, show you on the top, oh, okay, this is on the back of a piece of sticky sandpaper, so this is getting interesting, okay, so you've got, whoa, alright, I'm going to have to kind of, well, there we go, okay. So you've got your spool, right? I'm going to back the camera out here once I get this, this drawn. Put your thing there. you got a fin. Looks like, looks like that. It's got a little thing on the end. And then that clip. That clip's like, shaped like that. Okay. So this is your spool. This is getting pretty funny. This is your spool. Okay. This is the, the rod that sticks up from the from the case cover itself. Goes up through the spool. This is your fin. And this is the little dingus there on the fin that goes in the flywheel. Alright. And your flywheel 
just has three holes in it like that just about in that pattern and that grabs on one of them holes and spins a flywheel now your clip is shaped like this okay I don't know if this is right or not I mean I know the pictures right but I mean I don't know if what I did is right or not but it worked and I'm assuming it can't be right and, and I don't know why it's working because if it's working then why did they need to include the whole disc spacer piece to begin with but so what I did is I took the clip here this is last resort guys took the clip put it on here then I took that extra end off the clip see how that curled up around I took that end and I set that up so that that corralled a little dingus on the fin that was right around there so this allowed the fin to move like it has to right but it kept down pressure on it and it kept it from coming up out of its hole on the spool that's what I did so if that was the way it was supposed to be which I don't know if it was or not I can't find enough photos to prove it or whether or not it wasn't I don't know but if it if that works I don't know why they had that plastic disc thing to begin with but anyway that's what I did so and it's working it's I mean it's working good knock on wood this this could crap out on me tomorrow after me saying this but so far it's working really good so yeah that was the starter rope issue in the in the video where I kept I kept pulling it out and it was just coming straight out and it wasn't rewinding that was happening that fin was coming loose and it was kicking in their sideways and then it was binding and then it wasn't letting it retract so that's kind of a complicated description wish I could have taken the cover off and showed you but like I say I just got that back together I don't know what it's gonna do so in the end the other day here's what I determined off camera it, I actually filmed that on Easter, by the way. Off, <laughs> in case you guys are wondering what the Codge is doing on Easter. That's what he was doing. So off camera, I, uh, I took the Solo out. And I could see cranking on it a little bit. I mean, first of all, this is really weird. Let me, let me show you guys this. So you got this line that comes up through here. Right? It comes off a little nipple down in there sticks down the tank. There's no line on the other end. It comes up around. And then it goes into this screw. That screw. Right there. It goes into the end of that. It screws in. That's it. So I was like, what the heck, right? I guess it's like a vent line for to give it like back suction so that it can actually draw. But I don't know. It's weird. I've never seen a saw with that before. Like, ever. So... I don't know. I don't know if most saws have something built in. I, I don't know. So that kind of perplexed me. But anyway, I could see the gas coming up through this. So I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. And then I could see... Here's your... You're fitting here for the gas line. <coughs> All these gas fumes get me coughing, guys. Uh, that comes up through. Hooks on there. And I could see the gas was like right there and that's the end of the thing there and that the gas is right there all, all bubbling right so it just wasn't sucking the gas up through so I was like okay so I went ahead and this don't have like choke or anything by the way kind of odd but it doesn't it doesn't have anything like that just just the trigger I went ahead hit the trigger opened that throttle body right I poured gas down there then I switch the baby to on, right here, that's on, and then I cranked her, and I, uh, I held the trigger, because if you put the trigger lock on, I don't understand, I think it's broke or something, I don't know, it, it locks, but it, but it doesn't, you know what I'm saying, like the button goes in, but shouldn't that be throttle open, and that locks? I don't know. So anyway, that's what I did. So hold, held the trigger, cranked her over. She started. And I mean, it didn't run long because I just had what I poured down the carburetor. And it was sucking gas. I mean, that was drawn. So I was like, hey, 
maybe I can maybe I can get it to draw. I cleaned the carburetor on this already. I took it apart when I first got it, cleaned it, oiled the gaskets. I had hopes that I wasn't gonna have to put a carb kit in it because the saw's not that old, right? I mean, it's 30 years old, but I figured that it probably had a carb kit since it was, you know, originally built. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't know how old the carb kit was. It looked like Grandpa had done a lot of work to these towards the end of it there because a lot of these had like new lines and stuff on them. So anyway, I I put those new lines on, cleaned the carburetor, uh, yeah, oiled the gaskets up and everything. Diaphragm and everything looked fine. But I'm assuming that diaphragm is just weak enough that it's not all... Because, I mean, that gas is right there, too, when you're cranking it. So I thought maybe there's a chance if I took a soda bottle and I filled it full of gas and drilled a hole in the cap could sit here and bottle feed it once I got it running right maybe it would come out of whatever its issue is and it might suck gas but right now I don't have the time I'm trying to get all these other saws running so I'm just I'm just gonna get a carb kit for it for sure but yeah that's that's what's happening with the solo that's the update so there will be more to come with the solo this saw is a really nice saw I mean, it is. It's a really nice saw. And I feel better now knowing what the starter spool was and stuff. I don't, I don't feel so uh, aggressive toward the saw, frankly. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I really want this saw to be like, like my daily driver. If you can say that about chainsaw. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Like, this saw, I see myself using this saw probably the most out of all the saws, right? It's got a chain brake on it that actually works. It's a nice saw. It's not underpowered or anything. I mean, it's it's like a 50-some-odd cc. There'll be a clip in the video, uh, beginning of this video, where I'll tell all about it, uh, specifications-wise and everything. But, yeah, I mean, it's a really nice saw. And apparently it's going to run fine once I get a carb kit open. I mean, it's got spark, and it runs, runs if you feed it down the carb. So, I mean... I got high hopes. High hopes. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, that's the update on the on the 647. And yeah, we'll we'll get a carb kit for it. I, I called around the other day and nobody had one, so I'll have to order one online. So it'll be a little bit before it gets here. But I mean, all these saws really need a carb kit. It's the way it is. I've tried to kind of cut a little few corners there, clean the carbs up, oil the gaskets, but no, they all need carb kits. So that's going to get kind of pricey because all these old saws, I'm paying like 20 bucks for a carb kit, right? I've got like eight saws here. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> spending money like it's going out of style, right? Anything... I think I've said this before, but anything that mixes its gas and its oil seriously ought to be outlawed. It's just, it's a nightmare. I'm starting to see why Grandpa had eight saws. Alright. I mean, there's been stories about, about Grandpa. He'd go out, right, want to cut his firewood, because he burned wood, right? So you need to, you know, get his firewood up, whatever. He'd go out, he'd get one saw out, and he'd crank on it, and crank on it, and crank on it, and crank on it, and it would not start. So he'd start swearing, he'd pick it up, he'd throw it across his dooryard, right? He'd stick bar first into the ground. And then, according to witnesses, <laughs> nine times out of ten it would actually start at that point. And if it didn't, he had backup, and plenty of it. So, it's kind of funny. Especially if you know, you know a lot about the carburetors and stuff. Because, like, if the needle was sticking, right, or the diaphragm was sticking, or something was stuck in that carburetor, which, good chance, right? And he threw that like that. Could have jarred it loose. I mean, it, it makes sense. Plus, with these things, they can be so temperamental. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. But anyway, guys, that's the update. 647. I really like this all. I really want it to run. Going to get a carb kit in it. Otherwise, knock on wood, I think it's ready to go. But you can tell, actually, I want to show you this before we go. You can tell how much he loved the saw and how much he used it. 
I mean, it was his baby, I'm told. It, he didn't like blowing it out to anybody. He, it, this was his saw. Look at the teeth on the, on the saw. If I could get the camera to focus. That's been my problem all day. Come on, focus. Does not want to focus on that. Why? It should focus. There we go. I guess I just have to get further back. So you see the size of that tooth, right? I don't know if I've got... I mean, most of you know how long a tooth is anyway, but for those who don't... Here's your average size tooth on a new chain. Next to the teeth on this chain. He filed the crap out of this chain. I mean, he used this saw a lot. Look at that. Better than half the tooth is filed off. So, anyway guys, that's that's it. I won't hold you up, but but that's that's the update. So I'll get the carb kit whenever that comes, and we'll continue on it. It might be a while, because i got a lot of different saws in the mix, and I don't know how long it'll be until the carb kit gets here. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. This has been... Um, traumatic <laughs> oh it's been fun though so yeah yeah we'll be back with the uh with the solo so thanks for watching guys like and subscribe if you're new to the channel leave a comment all right if you're not new to the channel leave a comment if you like the video leave a comment if you don't like the video you can leave a comment. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, thanks thanks for watching. That's it for the solo for now. And uh, they'll be back with part two.